Okay, so today we're going to take a look at being able to use Windows Remote Desktop Protocol to connect to our Ubuntu server that's running in Amazon's cloud. Um, that requires that uh, that we actually install certain software on our uh, on our Ubuntu server. Um, but I've done a lot of the work already for you, and I'll show you how to actually make use of that stuff. Um, so as usual, I'm logged into my uh, into my Amazon uh, Web Services console. We're going to go over to uh, to Elastic, um, just like we have done in the past, and we're going to select our uh, our region. And as you can see, we have the uh, the latest version of Ubuntu um, as of this recording is uh, is Ubuntu 14.10. Okay, so I'm going to use this one right here, and we'll just go ahead and launch that. Okay, that um, pops open a new tab and uh, and begins to uh, to the uh, the wizard for uh, for creating my instance. Okay, so we'll see. Um, you know, I have it as the uh, oops, I have it as the uh, the micro instance already set. We're going to leave that just as it is. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, and just click review and launch. Okay, from review and launch, you'll notice right away it does give me the warning about uh, about the security groups. Okay, um, namely that uh, that the the particular options it's going to use it's open to the world. We don't want that to be the case. Um, I'm actually just going to come in here and select one of the pre-existing ones that I've already created um, and if you want to know how to actually do this and get it set up right um, again I do have other videos um, on my YouTube channel for uh, for doing just that okay so I'm just gonna scroll down to find my uh, my correct group um, let's see it is right here SSH restricted that's the one that I want okay so that's the one that uh, that actually restricts it to uh, to IP addresses um, from my my personal computer um, as well as a uh, as well as from from where I'm working okay then I'm also going to uh, then the next thing I want to do um, is to make use of a really really cool feature of EC2 that uh, that not a lot of people at least early um, initially actually know about okay so here in instance details um, I'm gonna click the uh, the edit instance details um, option and I'm gonna leave all this stuff here but as I scroll down I'm gonna go to the advanced details okay and I'm just gonna spin that open um, and we're gonna see uh, this option here okay so right here we have have this rather innocuous innocuously labeled user data section um, this is the this is the gold mine here okay so what this allows you to do is you can put in um, instructions for uh, for your or, or commands for your server to run when it first starts up so if you want particular software installed you can actually make that happen Okay. Now, what software do you need? What commands do you have to put in? That's where I said I've got you covered. Okay. So in GitHub, um, and if you haven't used GitHub before, and you're not familiar with Git. Don't worry about it. You really don't need to know about any of that stuff. Okay. Um, all you need to do is you need to go to uh, to the link, and uh, if you're in my class, you you'll have the link already. Um, if not, then uh, if you're watching this uh, this on YouTube, um, then I'll have the link in the show notes. Okay. But here I have my my EC2 uh, Ubuntu in its scripts repository and in here you'll see each of these things that end in dot sh each one of those is an initialization script okay so i have a basic basic ubuntu one um i have a couple of different ones one for doing a basic lamp server one for doing a lamp server with php my admin um if you're doing javascript development want a mean stack you have that uh, the one that we're going to deal with today though is this one right here the ubuntu rdp okay so if i click on that um we'll actually actually see it takes us into uh, this nice little view um, what I'm actually going to do though is I'm going to go into raw view because I'm going to really I, I don't want all this extra formatting and, and so forth okay so, so we go into raw view and we get the uh, the contents of this file here okay now I could actually just uh, cut and paste this in in fact uh, in fact right just uh, right click say select all and I'm going to copy that in and I'll go back over here to my management console and I can paste that directly in and I can run it just as it is. Okay. But there is one little change I'm going to make to that. Okay. So, um, right at the, uh, at the top of the file here, okay, you'll see, um, Right, so here we are. Here's the top of the file. This line right here where it says RDP user equals that. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to create a uh, 
a new user under Linux um, that we can log in with, right? Because remember, by default, what we end up with is uh, we have a user called Ubuntu that we can't log in um, using a password with. Okay, so we need another user that we're going to have a, a password set for um, that we'll actually log into for um, for using the remote desktop. Okay, so you can leave it just like this if if RDP user is fine. If you want to personalize it, that's fine too. I mean, in, I, in my case, um, I'm going to personalize it. I'm just going to name it uh, Phil right? Give it my name. Okay. All the rest of the stuff I'll just leave in there. Um, but it's a very simple shell script in here, right? So you can see it's actually just a bash shell right there. Um, it basically, we turn off, we, we set this so that if there are any errors, um, basically the script will stop the non-interactive that gets set simply because we uh, want to make sure that, uh, as we're doing, running some of the install programs, if they if they would normally stop for prompts, we actually turn that off. Uh, you can see here, I'm just setting the time zone to uh, to the eastern time zone you know if you're in another part of the world uh, you can just change that accordingly um, then I create the actual user here right so I'm doing that there um, here's some message of the day stuff we'll see that in a, in a little bit okay and then we actually do the the actual install and so forth right so we connect to the uh, the appropriate servers get the latest information do any upgrading we need um, install the uh, the particular packages do a little more um, setup for uh, for the window manager and that's all that script has to do okay um so now once again i'm just going to say review and launch okay and we're back to uh, all of our stuff here and now i can just go back to launch okay so i'm say uh, have an existing uh, key pair i'll go to uh, i'll go to one of those and um acknowledge that i have that and go ahead and launch my instance Okay, so it's starting up my instance, and I can uh, and I can come into here to see uh, to see what the status of my instance is. Okay, now a couple of things to note um, for for what we're installing right now. Honestly, there's a bunch of software. It's actually going to take a few minutes to to really get through all of that stuff okay so you know i would give it a good five minutes ten minutes something like that um then come back and uh and try logging in and 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 going for that okay so you know just so that you're aware especially um you can make it a little faster if when you start it up you actually uh you start it up with a uh with a beefier server of course that does cost you more money so you know we'll go with the we'll keep it with the uh the small instance and so forth and just wait a little bit for it to kind of run its uh run its course okay so it's been just about uh just about five minutes here in uh in in uh real time um i spared you uh, actually just waiting that five minutes um in the video um so now we're going to uh gonna go check this stuff out okay so you can see uh my server is in fact running uh there's my public uh dns um you know normally you don't want to make this uh you don't generally want to make this publicly available for anyone on the uh, interweb unless you're really putting up a server um of course i'm just going to throw this whole thing away so i really won't be using this long enough anyways um what i'm going to do is i'm going to fire up putty and uh what we're going to do with putty now is uh you'll notice i already have a saved session called ec2 rdp okay i'm going to load that up um and it has our usual stuff here our ubuntu um i'm going to actually change over my uh, public dns to be the right value um so we'll make sure that's saved okay but the other thing we're actually going to do here is we want to set up an ssh tunnel okay so what this basically does um ssh tunneling allows you to uh to take other kinds of programs that normally would communicate in an insecure manner things like for instance uh, remote desktop okay remote desktop isn't actually encrypted end to end and so therefore um, if you're really dealing with kind of sensitive information etc you want to uh, you want to make sure that that's encrypted okay so we're going to set up an SSH tunnel for that it's actually pretty easy to do all we're going to do we're just going to spin open SSH here we're going to go to tunnels okay and in there all I did you'll see here where it says uh, the 3391, that's what I added right in this box. And then for destination, I put in 127.0.0.1 colon 3389. And I clicked add and that got ad added into here. 
Okay, so you can do that. You add in that rule, and um, then again, you can just save that for your uh, for your session. Okay, so that will create a uh, a secure tunnel for us to use. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, click save, and now we'll do our open. Okay. So there we go. Uh, we are, have actually connected in. Um, I'm not going to cache this uh, that particular fingerprint. Uh, no big deal there. Let me go ahead and um, and make this uh, this window a little bit easier to uh, to see on uh, on the video here. There we go. Okay. So now we got uh, now we got our window kind of properly sized. Um, now some of the things I want to show want to point out to you here is uh, notice this little section here. It says set the password of fill using um, right. So this little section here actually was uh, was in fact created by that uh, that startup script that we wrote. Okay, so it shows us that uh, that it created our RDP user. In my case, uh, the the RDP user's name was Phil, and it shows me how to actually create a password for that. Right, so I just need this command here so I just notice I just highlight that then I'm going to come down here when I right click that just paste that in directly okay so it's really handy um, then all I got to do is hit enter and it asks me for a, uh, a password for that so I can go ahead and uh, type in a password you'll notice it doesn't echo anything to the screen um, it will ask me to uh, to verify that again um, luckily I was able to uh, to type it correct uh, type it the same both times um, and so now I actually have uh, have the password set for for that okay so we've done that um now let's uh let's actually try connecting in with our uh with uh with with remote desktop okay so from windows i'm going to run remote uh remote desktop um and uh and basically just spin this open okay so we're going to connect in notice localhost colon and then it's the 3391 that's the setting we want for the uh for the the um the ssh tunnel that we're using okay so we do need to have putty open because that's the thing that's created our our tunnel for us and whoops sorry about that and then the username here is whatever username you provided for the rdp user if you didn't change it then it's just rdp user okay and you can do other things like for instance uh change your display settings um here i happen to have it set to 1024 by 768 you can actually make it full screen etc um you know any of those things i'm just going to have it uh, have it be this size so that we can kind of see that within uh within our window here all right, so I'm gonna come back over here. I click connect, right? Um, it asks about this, that's fine. Just go ahead and click yes. Um, and then you see this here, okay? Notice the username is the same, there's that fill. And now it's asking for that password that we just created. Okay, so I'll click okay. It will go through its connection process. You'll see this little screensaver thing. That's fine. Um, notice also it's asking, uh, it asks you again for your password. That's okay. Just enter that in. Okay. Um, and the first time you see it, it says, okay, do you want this default config? Um, so you can use really either. I'll say, okay, fine. Let's use the default config, right? There's our, uh, there's our setup, right? So we have our nice default configuration. We have a little menu here. We can do terminal editor, etc. Okay. Now, as cool as this is, um, there's just a couple of other little things that you have to be concerned with. Okay. First of all, the terminal editor, um, that is, it's just a regular terminal, right? So we can type in LS and do all of those things. Now there is a slight problem. And that problem is that, uh, that when you, uh, if you want to use command completion, that is, that is remember in Linux, uh, we can start typing out something and then hit the tab key and that should, and I'm hitting the tab key right now. And you'll notice it's not completing that, uh, any of the words for me. Okay. That's because of a slight, uh, a slight issue with, uh, this window manager and some of its setups. Okay. But again, I got you covered, right? Go back over to to our our stuff right it says to fix tab completion in xfce go to the following right so application settings window okay so that's what we'll do All right so applications and um settings did i say window no just window okay
Well, let's try Window Manager. Okay. Then it says go to the Keyboard tab. There's our Keyboard tab. Okay. Um, and it says clear the option for Switch Window for Same Application. Okay. So here's that right there. And notice there's the Clear option. Okay. So we've cleared that out. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and click Close. Okay. So now. Um, if I go back to my terminal emulator, you'll see I do ls, dow, hit tab, there we have our tab completion. Okay, that's really cool. Now, a couple of other things, um, you know, if you need to uh, make this bigger, etc., um, you can certainly go into, uh, into preferences, right, go to your appearance, you can make your font um, even larger if you want, okay, like so. <clears throat> Here's what I want to show you, okay. Notice if I do print working directory, the directory that I'm in is home fill, right? That is different than, right, the Ubuntu directory. Okay, so um, if I go up one directory, right, notice we have the Ubuntu directory. That's the directory for the Ubuntu account, right? So if I come back over here um, where we had logged in um, under PuTTY, if I print that, it says, oh, I'm in home Ubuntu, whereas over here, Okay, we're actually uh, we're actually um, in the fill directory, right? Basically, the the RDP user. Okay, so they are two separate accounts, two separate users, etc. So just be be kind of cognizant of that, depending on where you happen to run various commands, etc. All right, that's it. Good luck.